Hey everybody, what we're talking about today is do-it-yourself photo radar. So let's get going. Well, first of all, photo radar is not a breach of the peace. The um, only ones that I've ever seen were for red light cameras and speeding. And that's not a breach of the peace. So uh, the reason for the initial detention, speeding and running a red light are not a breach of the peace. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, some personal experiences I've had. Um, and this is something some people told me in Ontario. This is Ontario, Canada, which is a common law country. Comes from the common law of England, just like the USA. Uh, anyways, um, I used to, I was there back in the mid-90s, late 90s. And they told me at that time that they had actually had photo radar for a period of about three months. And after that, they canceled the program. And the reason they canceled the program, most people don't know, is that <clears throat> they had 250,000 court cases. So um, the important thing to understand here is, is that this is all about money, okay? These people are thieves, and they're trying to steal some money. And um, it's all volunteer, okay? If you send in a donation, then you just donated, okay? You're a Satanist, quite frankly, because you did not, um, you, you lied, okay? By, by sending in that money, you said you were guilty and you weren't. Um, so uh, you were a Satanist, actually. Um, and uh, if enough people stand up and say no, they don't even have to be on point. If enough people stand up and say no, then it's not going to happen. They'll decide to steal their money some other way. Um, and this thing in Arizona is something we're going to talk about in a minute because um, um, I can say that I have some first-hand knowledge of that. But the bottom line is, is that any image, okay, any image is hearsay, okay? And hearsay evidence does, is not admissible as evidence in any court of law. So then the question is, is do you have any witnesses to this alleged crime? And that's what I put in my document. Thank you for this hearsay evidence. Do you have any witnesses to this alleged crime? So, you know, all of this stuff in here, is going to be um, um, what I would put in a document that I serve on them in response. Okay, um, so um, let's continue. Um, on the 11th of May, we're talking about the Arizona matter now of 2009. I received a photo radar ticket from the Arizona DPS. Um, my son had been driving my truck in Arizona. I rejected their offer of contract and sent notice and demands to the court, the judge, and the mayor. Okay, and if you want to know what a notice and demand is, uh, watch the do-it-yourself estoppel certificates video. And then the case disappeared. It's amazing how that works. Um, on the 22nd of February 2010, the Arizona DPS sent their straw man a photo radar ticket. I sent notice and demands to the DPS officer, the director of public safety, the attorney general, and the, the clerk masquerading as a judge. I filed a criminal complaint against them, all of them, for perjury, uh, treason, sedition. Um, they canceled the photo radar program. And they sent me notice that they're canceling the, the straw man's driver's license, which is okay with me, quite frankly. Although they never did. <laughs> That's amazing how that works. Anyways, this is actually um, um, a website, newspaper.com, where the headline is Arizona shuts down freeway speed cameras. Okay. And so I brought up the issues uh, that I bring out in here and others. Um, for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Okay, so when a police officer claims the state of Texas or the state of Arizona was injured, that's perjury. Okay. They assault you with their criminal corporation. This is Rundle versus Delaware. 
uh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1852. Uh, my opinion is and has long been that the mayor and aldermen of a city corporation or the president and directors of a bank or the president and directors of a railroad company or of other similar corporations are the true parties that are sued, that are that sue and are sued as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, therefore, being not a natural person but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be a citizen of a state or of the United States and cannot fall within the terms or power of the above mentioned article and therefore can neither plead nor be impleaded in the courts of the United States. Now, uh, obviously, uh, subsequent uh, the, um, the 14th Amendment actually uh, uh, turned corporations into um, persons. And, um, and uh, so then, then they gave them standing to sue and that's what happens. But again, um, that's only in the Roman cults courts, okay? And so if you want a lawful de jure court, then you have to make your pleadings around that. If you go and engage in color of law, then you're going to get a bail priest. If you keep it strictly common law, then you might get a lawful de jure judge, okay? You're more likely to, you know? I mean, some of them just want to be a bail priest anyways. Uh, in every criminal trial, a prosecution must prove the corpus delecti, or the body of the crime itself, i.e. the fact of injury, loss, or harm, and the existence of a criminal agency as its cause. Okay, they got to show intent. There are no common law offenses against the United States. Only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command are crimes. So then who does Congress have jurisdiction over? It's not state citizens, I can tell you that. <laughs> Same thing in Texas, okay? Every state. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its application, okay? It's, there's no common law crimes in Texas. It's, that means what they're saying is that the, that the statutes really only apply in the United States, okay? And we'll go into that here a little bit further. U.S. citizens don't get an Article Three court. They only get an Article One military tribunal. And so what they're saying here, if you think about it, is that all statutes apply to U.S. citizens. It's all commerce. It's all business. A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penalty given by statute, where an action is founded entirely upon a statute and the only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture, such action is a penal action, okay? It's all about the money. It's always all about the money. They want their money. The words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense against its laws. Okay, then that's, we're talking U.S. citizens here, people. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture or to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. It's all contracts. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute and brought with a sole object of recovering a penalty or forfeiture imposed as punishment for specific offense, where our remedial action is one brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. Okay, again, contracts. Okay, where's the contract? A penal action is one founded entirely on statute and the only object is to recover a penalty or a forfeiture imposed as a punishment for a certain specific offense while a remedial action is one which is brought to obtain compensation or, or indemnity. A penal action is a civil suit, okay? There are no criminal proceedings. They're all civil. Brought for the recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. That's the corporation, okay? You got to understand the public is not me or you. It's the corporation. Such actions are civil actions, on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, and on the other actions 
for private injuries in which the party agreed may by statute recover punitive damages. The power to create presumptions is not a means of escape from constitutional restrictions. So these guys are perjuring their oath, okay? And this bail priest is bought and paid for. And so when you start bringing this stuff up, you know, you make it so they don't want to talk to you anymore. That's, that's essentially what happens, okay? You make it so they don't want to talk to you anymore. And it's kind of nice having it that way. <laughs> They are proceeding on presumptive hearsay evidence, okay? Are there any witnesses to this alleged crime? We have a common law right to travel for free on the highways. They're operating under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. That's exactly where they're operating under because that gives them the right to presume certain things in the United States, okay? Again, this is all United States. Their codes only apply to their corporate slaves. They're involved in racketeering. The officers and directors of their corporation are responsible, and that's who I would go after. The right of a citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon by horse-drawn carriage, wagon, or automobile is not a mere privilege which may be permitted or prohibited at will, but a common right which he has under his right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Under this constitutional guarantee, one may therefore, under normal conditions, travel at his inclination along the public highways or in public places, and while conducting himself in an orderly and decent manner, neither interfering with nor disturbing another's rights, he will be protected not only in his person, but in his safe conduct. And that's Thompson versus Smith, which is cited in American Jurisprudence, Constitutional Law, Section 329, page 1135. The right to make use of an automobile as a vehicle uh, of travel along the highways of the state is no longer an open question. The owners thereof have the same rights on the roads and streets as the drivers of horses and those riding a bicycle or traveling in some other vehicle. Uh, the automobile may be used with safety to others, others users of the highway and in its proper use upon the highways there is an equal right with the users of other vehicles properly upon the highways. The law recognizes such right of use upon general principles. The law does not denounce motor carriages as such on public highways. They have an equal right with other vehicles of common use to occupy the streets and roads. It is, an, it is improper to say that the driver of the horse has the rights of the roads superior to the driver of the automobile. Both have the right to use the easement. A highway is a public way open and free to anyone who has occasion to pass along it on foot or with any kind of vehicle. There can be no question of the right of automobile owners to occupy and use the public streets of cities or highways in the rural districts. The word automobile connotes a pleasure vehicle designed for the transportation of persons on highways. And what it is, these, uh, these federal codes that they're passing, is they're a bill of attainder. It means legislative act, no matter what they're formed, that apply either to named individuals or to easily ascertainable members of a group in such a way as to inflict punishment on them without a judicial trial. And judicial trial is the operative phrase. And we'll go into that in a minute. A bill of attainder is a special legislative enactment prescribing punishment without a trial for a specific person or group. Bills of attainder are prohibited by the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, and Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. Also, the term uh, act, bill of attainder, uh, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. A bill of pains and penalties is a legislative act, though similar to a bill of attainder, prescribes punishment less severe than capital punishment. Bills of pains and penalties are included within the U.S. Constitution's bans on bills of attainder. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition again. This is the... Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. The term motor vehicle means a self-propelled vehicle which is registered, okay, for highway use under the laws of any state or foreign country, okay, so that gives them the right to presume it's a motor vehicle, although in Title 18, United States Code, Section 31, it says that it has to be carrying passengers or property for hire. Anyways, 
Uh, security, the term security. See, this is where they get into, because this is all in uh, commerce, okay? And uh, Title 18 is the criminal code. So this, uh, all of these, uh, uh, that's why I talked about the penal, okay? Which is talking about penalties, and but they're all civil, okay? So this is commerce, and, and all these penalties are really civil, okay? They might... Uh, be uh, uh, putting you in their jail, but it's they're getting you into, they're selling you into slavery is what they're doing, okay? They're making merchandise of you and selling you into slavery. And we're going to talk about that too. The security means the security means any bond, debenture, notes, a certificate, or other evidence of indes indebtedness. Um, anyways, so and that talks about at the bottom there, negotiable instruments or money. And that's the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 at Public Law 89-719, which is also located at 80 Stat 1130 and 1131. This particular portion of it, the Federal Tax Lien Act, is a bit lengthier, actually. Uh, to claim and exercise a constitutional right guaranteed cannot be converted into a crime. No state shall convert a liberty into a privilege, license it, and charge a fee, therefore. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of his exercise of constitutional rights. If a state converts a right or liberty into a privilege, the citizen can ignore the license and fee and engage in the right with impunity. So, um, again... They're converting a right into a privilege. A kangaroo court. See, this is why it's a bill of attainder. A kangaroo court is a term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, page 868. Um, and this is U.S. Supreme Court again. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of a municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. So it's a kangaroo court. That guy's not a judge up there. He's a clerk masquerading as a judge. Courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but act merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial and not in a discretionary capacity. In other words, he's bought and paid for. Okay, it's prejudged. It is the accepted rule, not only in state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a bought and paid for clerk. Judges have become involved in enforcement of mere civil statutes, uh, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks for the involved agency. They are bought and paid for. A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders and warrants. Uh, a clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity, okay? They might as well go get some bag person off the street and bring him in here and say, we'll pay you 50 bucks to convict this guy. That's exactly what they're doing. Think about it. They put him in his nice Roman cult monkey suit and, uh, and put on their show trial. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. It does not exist. All laws must be lawful allowed by common law or some statute. If they are administered by persons in a private capacity or not duly authorized, they are jorum non, quorum non judis. The point I want to make here is that all government officials can be in their official capacity or their private capacity. The burden's on you to know which capacity he's in. Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume 2. And that's citing book 3, Koch's Institutes on the Laws of England, book 4, Koch's Institutes on the Laws of England. Okay, so it's, it's citing some pretty good sources. International law rule adopted for areas under federal legislative jurisdiction. This is why all state statutes are actually federal statutes, okay? The Supreme Court has ruled on numerous occasions. Federalizes state civil law, including common law. The rule serves to federalize not only statutory, but the common law of a state. Um, 
And this is uh, federal uh, jurisdictional or federal areas. This is a book that you can easily get online. Jurisdiction over federal areas within the states report of the Interdepartmental Committee for the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States. Part 2, a text of the law of legislative jurisdiction submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President June 1957. This is found on page 158. And this is found on page 165 of the same book. The civil laws effective in an area of exclusive federal jurisdiction are federal law, notwithstanding their derivation from state law. Okay? So the civil laws, all statutes, are actually federal. Even though it says state of Texas all over it, it's actually federal. Or state of Arizona or whatever. Okay? And a cause arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to the, the bail priests in the federal court under sections whatever. Okay? And so, again, that's the same book I just previously cited. Every taxpayer is assessed to a trust having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of the court's prerogative jurisdiction. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the public charitable trust. The constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of USA and U.S. Inc., okay? And that's located at the Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, page 15,641 through 15,646. And if anybody has ever looked at the Congressional Record, they would know that five pages of the Congressional Record would not fit in that site, and therefore it's a summary, It might be correctly said there's no such thing as a citizen of the United States. A citizen of any one of the states of the Union is held to be and called a citizen of the United States, although technically and abstractly there is no such thing. The privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first eight amendments to the federal constitution against the powers of the federal government. Get a load of that. U.S. citizens have no rights. The only absolute and unqualified right of a United States citizen is to residence within the territorial boundaries of the United States. U.S. citizens have no rights. They are slaves. Watch my U.S. citizens are slaves video. Citizenship is a political status and may be defined and privilege limited by Congress. The term resident and citizen of the United States as distinguished from a citizen of one of the states uh, one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. That's U.S. Actually, that's not the Supreme Court. That's a federal court, though. Uh, it is impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. All jurisdiction facts supporting the claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. Okay. So again, they're sending you an image. They're sending you hearsay. They're not sending you any evidence of any contract. They're sending you hearsay. <laughs> That's what they're sending you. There's two states in every state. There's a lawful state and a federal territory. Uh, there's been a created fictional federal state of XXX within a state. Um, Again, you need to watch my other recent videos, uh, U.S. Citizens a Slave, um, and um, um, there's some other ones, too, that I've published that uh, go through, and I even have the Indiana and Company in one of them. Um, the uh, annual report from, like, 1933, the cover page. Anyways... We can't even begin to count the number of times judges, lawyers, and statesmen have said there isn't any common law anymore. It would be, it has been replaced by statutes. They would be more truthful if they said there isn't any common law anymore. It's been replaced by martial law. Okay, everything's under martial law. Uh, um, that's Diet versus Turner, the non-ratification of the Fourteenth Amendment by Judge H. Ellett, Utah Supreme Court. In the meantime, civil law was the form of law imposed in the Roman Empire. Was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law, to have superior equities, to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is the law, then it follows its own course rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. 
And that's again Diet versus Turner, the non-ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ellen, in Utah Supreme Court. A U.S. citizen is not entitled to an Article III court, but instead gets an Article I court with a plenary military dictatorship jurisdiction. And Article I, Section 8, Clause 17, Constitution for the United States of America, as defined and reinstated in National Mutual Insurance Company, the District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, which further states that citizens of the District of Columbia are not embraced in the judicial power under Article III of the Constitution for the United States of America. The same statement is held in Hepburn versus Dundas uh, um, in 1804. The Supreme Court versus uh, Chief Justice Marshall held that a citizen of the District of Columbia is not a citizen of a state. We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article III of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states were not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article III. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, that means military dictatorship people, and that also means U.S. citizens people, um, nationally covers those citizens even in one of the, when in one of the several states, as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. And that's the U.S. Supreme Court, 1948, National Mutual Insurance Company of the District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company. And this is where it's codified. If any citizen or resident of the United States does not reside in and is not found in any United States judicial district, such citizen or resident shall be treated as residing in the District of Columbia for purposes of any provisions of this title to A, jurisdiction of the courts, or B, enforcement of summons. And the U.S. Code was um, revised, and so I'm not sure whether it's 770139 or 7408 C. It's one of the two. The term individual means a citizen of the United States or alien lawfully admitted for permanent residence. Okay, that's what they have jurisdiction over, and that is all. The term federal personnel means officers and employees of the government of the United States, member of the uniformed services, including members of the reserve components, individuals entitled to receive immediate or deferred retirement benefits under any retirement program of the government of the United States, including survivor benefits. Okay, so what they're essentially saying here is that you are federal personnel if you have a social security number. But remember, I just read earlier that uh, um, a, t a U.S. citizen is a SESTK trust. So really, if you think about it, a SESTK trust has a Social Security number. So if you say that I have a Social Security number, you're saying that I accept responsibility for this SESTK trust. And all these SESTK trusts come from the Roman cult. Watch my recent videos about how a U.S. citizen is a slave. The term citizen in the United States is analogous to the term subject at the common law. State citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. U.S. Supreme Court, Twining versus New Jersey. State citizenship is a vested substantial property right that the state has no power to divest or impair these rights. The state cannot diminish the rights of the people. Again, U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and this has been going on from the beginning of time, okay? These people are Satanists. That's all they do is warfare. Statutes have been passed extending the courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish in order the use and exercise of law marshal, okay? And that's taken from the causes and necessities for taking up arms in 1775. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Declaration of Independence. He's combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury. And that's Declaration of Independence, 1776. 
And this is George III, chapter 12, 1778, only two years after the War of Independence was, or the Declaration of Independence was signed. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purposes of raising a revenue in His Majesty, the pigs, colonies, provinces, plantations in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders. Well, no joke, Batman! That from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever payable in any colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or West Indies, except only such duties as may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. So that's why Canada was given independence, so they could play stupid and assault people with their taxes again, the ones that aren't clearly involved in commerce. Okay, that's exactly what that's all about. And, um, and, and that's this pig, George III, is one that's behind it. He orchestrated the whole thing, um, and I talk about that in some of my other recent YouTube videos. Acapius. Acapius is of two sorts, um, one before judgment and one after judgment. That's basically the summary of what that says, um, and uh, you can pause it and read it if you want. Acapius ad satisfaciendum is after the judgment, and there's a recovery, and the debt uh, by this writ, the sheriff is commanded to take the, uh, the body of the defendant in execution, safely keep, to have his body in court at the return of the writ, to satisfy the plaintiff his debt and damages, okay? So, again, it's all about the money. Remember, it's all about the money. It's a kangaroo court. It's a bill of attainder. They're Satanists. They're thieves, a capius is not a warrant of arrest, okay? So if they, in Texas, and in most places, they issue capiuses. Matter of fact, I haven't seen any place yet that didn't, okay? And it's not a warrant of arrest, um, and it's a void judgment because the judge is operating as a clerk, masquerading as a judge. It's a show trial. It's a kangaroo court. I mean, we've talked about all of that in this presentation. They drag you into their kangaroo court and the clerk masquerading as a judge forges your signature onto their satanic contract to fabricate evidence of a debt. And then they issue a capius to their Satanist order followers to further assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law and no courts are bound to enforce it. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties. It affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. An unconstitutional law is void and is as no law. An offense created by it is not a crime. It never became a law and it was as much a nullity if it had been an act or declaration of an unauthorized assemblage of individuals, okay? So they're not obligated. They're operating in their private capacity uh, where there's no jurisdiction, there's no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Such has been the law from the days of Marshall Say, and that's a cite from Koch, uh, which is uh, cited in a U.S. Supreme Court case. A void judgment is one which from its inception is was a complete nullity and without legal effect. A void judgment is one which of no legal force or effect whatever. It's an absolute nullity. Its invalidity may be asserted by any person whose rights are affected at any time and in any place. It need not be attacked directly, but may be attacked collaterally whenever and wherever it's interposed. The courts have decreed that want of jurisdiction makes all acts of judges, magistrates, U.S. Marshals, sheriffs, local police, all void. Not just voidable, void. Watch the void judgments video. The end justifies the means. is satanic. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. Okay, these people are Satanists. They're thieves. They are the lowest form of life that lives. And we, need to, we the people, need to step up and take care of business. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren or the children of Israel and maketh merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief shall die. Okay, thou shalt put evil away from among you. Okay, these people are Satanists. They're selling people into slavery. They need to be put to death is what needs to happen. And through, but having said that, I would never endorse denying them due process. Okay, so they should be given all of the rights and protections of the Constitution, even though they're so adamant about denying those same rights to other people. Okay, um, 
And so, and through covetousness shall they with pain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. If we don't give them due process, then we're just as guilty as they are. And uh, so, anyways. Give me liberty or give me death, after is a phrase coined by Patrick Henry after he witnessed flogging, flogged to death for refusing to take a license, okay? That's how these Satanists operate, okay? Actually, what we need to do is turn the, that, that, that the Roman cult's head office over there in Rome, we need to turn that into a smoke and a hole. That's what we need to do. Everything their so-called court does is a fraud. They spell your name in all block capital letters. A fraud. That's the Roman cult Sestake Trust. They spell your name and all uh, address in all block capital letters. That's again the Roman cult. They present themselves as neutral and unbiased when in reality they're bought and paid for. All so-called judges are actually federal whores selling their justice. There is no such thing as an Article III court. They're all territorial. These Satanists cannot speak the truth. That's one of the hallmarks of Satanism. Lives, hath, truths, fraud, deception. They criminally convert your appellation. They criminally convert your postal address. They present the judge as neutral and unbiased when the so-called judge is actually a bought and paid for clerk. Everything they do is a fraud. Color signifies a probable plea, but which is in fact false. And that's taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. They lie and wait for you to say the wrong thing so they can justify selling you into slavery. Give color to admit, either expressly or impliedly by silence, that the opponent's allegations appear to be meritorious in common law pleading and defendant's plea to confession and avoidance, had to give color to the plaintiff's allegation in the complaint or the plea would be fatally defective. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Once a fraud, always a fraud. Everything they do is a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by subsequent act. They play their little games to get you to participate in their fraud. That's why they do it, okay? Once you participate in it, you cannot claim ignorance, okay? I mean, two-thirds of Americans are Satanists. I think that uh, it's more like about 90%. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Time cannot render valid an act void in its origin. Uh, out of fraud no action arises, and any act by any government official to conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It is a fraud to conceal a fraud, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Fraud and deceit should excuse no man. And any a fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Uh, um, what is otherwise good and justice is sought by force or fraud becomes bad and unjust. There will be no peace as long as the Roman cult is in power. All the Roman cult does is warfare. If you get a photo radar ticket, that's commercial warfare. Okay? That's all it is, is commercial warfare. And then, and then uh, uh, World War III, World War II, whichever world war, it's just a big commercial transaction. Everything they do is warfare. There were no world wars until the first central bank was set up. And Isaiah 57, 21, it says, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. So, again, you get what you deserve. Okay, Mark Fascio, a former Satanist priest, says that two-thirds of America are practicing Satanists, okay? You're getting what you deserve, okay? That's exactly what's happening. You deserve every bit of what's coming. You're of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, Okay? These people are Satanists. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so I'm afraid that if you're afraid to say anything about this or you're afraid to circulate this around to your friends or if you just don't believe it, well, you're not going to do too well on Judgment Day. Sorry. I... I wish you all the best. They send out their U.S. citizen pigs 
to assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you as a revenue officer under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Then they hold a show trial in their kangaroo court that has a U.S. citizen prosecutor and a U.S. citizen clerk masquerading as a judge. Then they make merchandise of you and sell you into slavery, by which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. Okay, they're going to go to hell, and spirit prisons, hell. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and they shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others, or their case my change of circumstances become his own. And what Jefferson's talking about here is karma. Okay, what goes around comes around. And if you don't take care of business, then you don't spread the word, you don't do what you can do, then it's not going to go too well for you, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say. When shall it be said in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them, my jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the age are not in want, the tax is not oppressive, the rational world is my friend because I am friend of its happiness. Then these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. And um, we have nothing to boast about here. The taxes are oppressive. Um, the streets are full of beggars. The jails are full of prisoners. We have Satanists running around populating the jails. Um, and so uh, it's, it's not doing too well. And we have nothing to be proud of here. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned that the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. And um, so this is my effort to make sure that I'm blameless on Judgment Day, and I hope you are too. I guess, um, I guess we'll see. Um, either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You are now a watchman. Circulate this video far and wide. Whether you do it with this video or other ways, I mean, knock yourself out. The point is, is you gotta, you gotta be motivated. You gotta show that you were doing everything you can do. Other videos, I've got over 240. Bankster Thieves, one, two, and three. Churchianity series, bankrupt corporate so-called governments, bar members, one, two, and three. How not to surrender, how not to volunteer for the selective service. Martial laws here. Do it yourself, no income tax, no sales tax, traffic stop, free mail, kangaroo courts. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. And this last paragraph is for all the uh, revenue officers operating in their private capacity under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 uh, um, because they can put their uh, privileges and benefits up their rectal orifice because I prefer gold or silver coin. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal, gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. If you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. Send me your success stories. Uh, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email address is engineerwin at yahoo. Uh, my YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page, I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group, Sovereignty International, at Facebook is being deleted as well. My Yahoo private group is Administering Your Public Servants, and my Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I hope you got something out of it, and, um, and spread the word. We need to uh, uh, bring an end to all of this stuff that's going on nowadays, and uh, have a real nice day.